What is up guys? Ugh. Morning Cacus here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be going over just so much raw information about what is coming up next for Destiny 2 and that is mainly focusing around Guardian Games. This is the next key thing on the content calendar for Season of the Worthy coming in mid-April or near the end of April. Now keep in mind Bungie is currently at a worthy work in home basis because of the coronavirus so this is subject to change in terms of a date so don't expect the date within the original content calendar to be set in stone and Bungie has already said this now where is all this information coming from revolving around Guardian games and new exotics and all the stuff we're going to be talking about well it comes from data mining and I am not a huge fan of that I think it's too often used as easy clickbait I mean how many times have you guys seen Hawkmoon videos where's the Hawkmoon the people make and those know what they're doing but we're just gonna have all this information in just one preview video and this is from a super reliable source and that is Ginsor and he is like the data miner extraordinaire going into the files and he is almost always correct with what he finds and so let's get started now this info is also augmented by an article by Paul Tassi that's linked in the description down below and first things first Fellwinter is apparently going to have a part to play in all this. Now, of course, the Fellwinter's Helm is one of the new exotics added this season. It's currently disabled, but that's beside the point. Now, Fellwinter was one of the Iron Lords, and we learned about them back in the Rise of Iron DLC for Destiny 1. There is still a bunch of SIVA-related hints going on within the database. For example, uh, this right here is from the data mined assets. This is clearly SIVA holding some sort of console. And again, this is Bungie clearly planning to involve SIVA in some way. SIVA is extremely connected with the Iron Lords. Now, another thing that would make Felwinter actually be a part of what's coming is some pieces of the code shown right here where we have Fellwinter Coffin, Fellwinter Resurrect, Fellwinter Siva. So clearly something involving that Iron Lord that was previously deceased and Siva is going to be happening. And we also have the Fellwinter's Lie. Now the Fellwinter's Lie was an old Destiny 1 shotgun. It was extremely powerful, fan favorite or fan hated depending on which end of it you were on in PvP, that's for sure. But this is actually an ornament in the Destiny 2 files for the Fellwinter's Lie. So that is saying that the Fellwinter's Lie shotgun is coming back in some way and this is going to be available in Destiny 2 at some point. So, will Fellwinter come back and be the central NPC within the Guardian Games event? Well, that does remain to be seen. However, we do have some more information about that Guardian Games event. Now, this info came out basically now, and Ginzer is quoted as saying, Earn points for your chosen class by completing bounties and challenges for EVA. Earn a brand new exotic ghost shell, exotic machine gun, and daily reward packages. The better your class, the better your daily rewards. Okay, so that's really interesting and we can learn a lot from that statement. Now, the reason that's in quotation marks is likely because there's an actual line of dialogue data mined from the game. So that's kind of what someone is going to be saying to you when Guardian Games starts. So let's break that down. Firstly, earn points for your chosen class by completing bounties and challenges for EVA. So Eva might be the central character in Guardian Games and that would kind of dispel the Fellwinter thing, but that would potentially mean that the Fellwinter stuff is coming up potentially even next season or at a different time beyond Guardian Games. I'm not exactly sure, but it does mean that we're just going to have more bounty farming to do for Guardian Games. And some people are not going to be happy about that, let's just say that. Now, what are those bounties? How do you complete them? How challenging are they? That's the real question. But the really interesting part in all of this is the fact that you're not just doing bounties for personal gain, you're earning points for your class. So if you're completing bounties on a Titan, the Titan team throughout all of Destiny 2 is earning more and more points. So that means that firstly, there's probably going to have to be bounties of 
pretty high degrees of varying difficulty. Maybe you have a bounty for completing a raid, and that awards a ton of points, and then you have bounties for doing patrols, doing strikes, and that doesn't award anywhere near as much points. So if you're doing like the harder stuff, you have a chance to pull your team, your class's team, ahead in the rankings but also this would probably mean that the bounties are maybe different in the way that we've seen before maybe they're infinitely spawning because if you have daily bounties and everyone just kind of gets them done for the day then no one really advances in the leaderboards in terms of your team right so being able to just repeat bounties and you have some real grinders on your team they can start to pull ahead for your class it's going to be interesting how bungie sets this up up. I hope it isn't just another reiteration of what's going on with the Warmind stuff of just doing different daily rotating bounties and weekly rotating bounties and then the repeatable bounties and that's it. Hopefully there's some interesting wrenches thrown in there, some really you know hard and difficult challenges that award ton of points and just we can see who within the community can get those done and bring their team ahead. So Bungie could make this very interesting, but I think a lot of the community is kind of burnt out on bounties, so we'll wait and see. The second part is where things get really interesting. Earn a brand new exotic ghost shell? Well, that doesn't seem like that big of a deal, right? Well, uh, Ginser was actually posting what these exotic ghost shells would be, and they are ballin'. So, this is the one for the Warlock, I believe, and that looks amazing. Now, this is subject to change, but I hope it doesn't change. If you're wondering what the other classes look like, this is the one for the Hunter, and then lastly, this is the one for the Titan. So obviously, some pretty sweet exotic ghost shells you can earn, and someone did ask, well, is this just available via Eververse? And Ginster said, no, it's supposed to be actually earned during Guardian Games. So this is one of the things you're working towards. Now that is definitely going to be a motivating factor, but I do have some questions. Uh, firstly, is that the reward you get for whatever class wins? So if hunters win, the hunters get that ghost shell and no one else gets anything else? Maybe. But also, if you earn those different ghost shells on different characters, you're going to be switching characters off of the whatever one you actually want that class to win for to try to get all three ghost shells, right? If you have three characters. So I wonder how that's going to work, but regardless, they do look sweet. Now let's move on to the other part of that statement, which says exotic machine gun. Now we did see a machine gun, presumably an exotic machine gun, used in the trailer in the new exotics part. Now we don't have any real information about this machine gun in game, but we do have some data mine stuff. In fact, we know exactly what it's going to be thanks to our boy Ginser. So it's called the Air Apparent, and it's basically the Cabal minigun. Like you see the big Cabal guys holding the minigun, it's that, but for your Guardian. Now the exotic perks, and again this is subject to change, but the exotic perks within the database so far say, firstly, you have Heavy Slug Thrower used to spin up. This weapon can be fired only when fully spun up. So there is going to be a time where you have to get the barrel spinning before you can shoot, which is kind of interesting. Note something like the Sweet Business, it shoots right away, but then it shoots faster and faster and faster. This won't be able to shoot and then it'll suddenly start to shoot at full RPM. That's the difference there. You've also got another unique perk, Armor of the Colossus. While at full health, spinning up this weapon protects you with an arc shield. So that's another very interesting feature. And here is what the heir apparent is gonna look like in game. And we actually do have an exotic ornament, the regal deterrent that's in the database as well. And here is what that looks like. Now there is also a catalyst for this weapon, uh, but there's catalyst in the database for like every weapon in the game, every exotic weapon in the game. So who knows when that's gonna come. And that's somewhat surprising to me because I really assumed that this exotic machine gun would be acquired via a big exotic quest, right? In fact, there's already a ton of videos out there saying it's going to be part of some big exotic quest. And it still might be part of some quest, but this leak makes it seem like it's actually associated with Guardian Games. And that would mean that it takes the role of the Arbalest. If you guys remember, the Arbalest, when it was first introduced, it was simply a reward for doing the actual event. Like, you would 
do the spring event at the time, I believe, the Verdant Forest, and you would earn materials to unlock all the different things, but the top unlock was just the Arbalest. So you got as much of the, you know, event currency as you could, and you spent that on the Arbalest, and you just got it. Like, that's it. You just got it. And that could be the case for this new exotic machine gun if it's associated with Guardian Games. But regardless, I am very excited for this exotic. Right now, some machine guns are doing pretty well in the DPS department, mainly the Xenophage. The Xenophage has actually become one of the better weapons to take down certain raid bosses with ever since it got a 50% damage buff, especially when you combine it with the Actium War Rigs. Because the Actium War Rig, an exotic chest piece for the Titan, got an update a while back. It originally only worked for auto rifles, automatically reloading them from reserves while you're shooting them, but now it works with machine guns. So a bunch of people with the Xenophage and the Actium War Rig can take down raid bosses. So having another new powerful exotic machine gun, combining that with the Actium War Rig, that's a combo I am very interested in. But the last thing within that statement about how Guardian Games works is the, the better your class, the better your daily rewards. So that potentially means whatever class is in the lead in terms of the most bounties done for them, etc., they'll get better rewards or currency faster, or I'm not exactly sure 100% what that means, like the better your class, presumably the better your class is doing. And lastly, we actually have the new logo for Guardian Games shown here. Guys, that is it for all the info that came out today and in previous days. Hope you enjoyed the video, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.